Hello everyone and welcome to my classroom on this new video series on JavaScript and we'll start from a beginner level and we'll move on to an advanced level. So why do we need to choose another new client-side programming language when we have so many other languages in the market? But what do we mean by client-side or server-side? So basically a server-side language that is the one that operates mainly on the server technologies like when we want to retrieve a data a certain data from our database we need a server side language so we need to run those languages specifically on server like PHP but for client side programming languages we don't need a server we just need a browser to write our application and test it on any browser that we like so basically the JavaScript, this programming language that we'll be talking about, is a client-side language and it is used to create rich web applications that are similar to our desktop applications that we usually use on Windows systems or Mac Macintosh systems. Because of the introduction of JavaScript in the web industry, we have recently received two new technologies that are creating a buzz in the market. The first technology that we have received is called the Ajax or Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It might be confusing to you but I'll be coming back to it uh, sometime later. And the second thing that we are now receiving or that has created a lot of buzz recently is called the Node.js. So what this Node.js does it takes the advantage of the core level of networking or the TCP IP and it can be used to create real-time applications like the chat applications um, that we usually use in our uh, Facebook's messenger or our Viber application so it is very useful in a way that we can create asynchronous applications that sends requests without the user being refreshing the page or reloading the page so what we receive today from Ajax is that it can be used to retrieve server-side data without even the user being uh, waiting for the page to reload so if an if an user, if an user who visits your site, if a visitor visit your site, then he or she can go on surfing your website without without even waiting for a single second. So Ajax has made a quite revolutionary movement in the sense that it interactively responds to your user's requests without making them to wait for a page reload. So this is really, really exciting in the sense, and we'll be talking more about that in later sections, but we need to get onto the basics of JavaScript programming language. And for that, we need an editor, an open source editor that is capable of, of understanding and compiling JavaScript codes. We also need several, uh, in several browsers, latest versions of all these browsers like Internet Explorer, uh, Google Chrome, then we also need um, Max Safari, Mason Touch, the Apple's Safari version. And you can also download the Safari version for Windows. And you can also go on for downloading Mozilla Firefox. So this is a better choice if you go on downloading all these uh, browsers, all these browser software, so that you can actually apply your code and see what happens and how they implement those JavaScript codes in their browser. Because these browser vendors usually have a f war in between them about how to implement the JavaScript codes. So it is better before we go on into a production level, before uh, uh, re before releasing our product, our JavaScript code on the market, we should go on testing them on as many browsers as we can and as many browsers, uh, if even if they're old and even if they're uh, not that recent in the market so we should try out almost all browsers but at least even if we can't try out all browsers we should at least try out the major ones like the Chrome Chrome is usually used by 52 percent or if I'm not mistaken by the survey 52 percent of the users and Google is doing a great job of uh, making it, making it up to date so is Mozilla but Sometimes Explorer quite does not receive all the JavaScript code uh, 
in a better sense so as this is a client-side language your user can go on uh, stopping your code from running in the browser so we should be really careful about how to use our code because if we use our JavaScript code in a negative sense this can go on affecting the system without even the users knowing it so let us now see how to download these browsers and I'll be showing you uh, how to download Mozilla and you can understand by it about how to download the other browsers and I'll also give you the links please check below on the description about the links on downloading Google Chrome then Internet Explorer the latest version of Internet Explorer is 11 from now and then you can go on downloading Mozilla Firefox I'll also give you the links of the open source editor for writing JavaScript code and I'll be using brackets for this so here we are on mozilla.org and I'll be downloading this uh, Mozilla Firefox browser and I'll be showing you the links, the pages from where I'll be downloading Google Chrome. You can also go on and Google out Google Chrome and you can also go on, go on, uh, on windows.microsoft.com and download Internet Explorer 11. I'll, I won't be showing you all of them but let me show you one of them. It's really easy to download and install all this software. So it will take a quite a so it will take some time to download. And in my case, this is the latest version, the Firefox 34.34.0.5, and you will get an executable file. So this is brackets, brackets is page and this is called brackets.io don't worry I'll be giving you all the links so check out the description below and we'll be using all the software to test our codes and compile and write our codes so here we are let me install this Mozilla Firefox If you want to uh, place your installed folders somewhere else, then you can choose options and you can choose options and go to browse, then choose the folder or the drive where you want to keep it. Okay. I don't want to place them all everywhere. So if you if you really if you really know all of this, so you should skip this and skip to the next video. But if you're really new to this, you should go on following me, and you should also see the descriptions below for the links. Okay, I don't want to place it on my desktop, and let's click install. So initially, this will download Firefox then it will automatically install the software uh, on my computer so I'll come back when all this download is done here we are our new browser is running successfully it will actually go on uh, asking whether you want to import all your history and bookmark so from other browsers if you have a default browser already set up so it will ask you to make it a default browser if you want you can g go ahead and make it default browser but I won't be making for my purpose let's click on this and now we already have our browser set up on our system and I want to show you all of this because they work in a similar process so you can download it by your own self I hope you don't make mistakes and at last we need the text edit the most important part for writing our codes so this brackets was actually developed by Adobe although it's an open source editor and it's quite good at interpreting your mistakes and compiling your codes you can also go on writing HTML CSS PHP C sharp Python Ruby Perl and all sorts of other programming languages on this text editor and you can also use it for your JavaScript text editor. We'll be extensively using HTML and JavaScript because JavaScript, as being a client side language, needs its broader HTML markup language for, the, for making an interactive uh, web layout. So 
let's download this first this will give you an .msi library file and it will take quite a long to download so I'll bring you back when I finish up downloading this uh, software and I'll install it with you